Whenever platform owners launch big announcements, all eyes go back to them. Add the word NEW in bold caps, and the hype machine kicks in like clockwork. So when the makers of Kling 2.5 Turbo talk about max creativity with exceptional value, it's probably just more of the same. The question is, what does that actually mean for users? A smart slogan is still just a carefully staged marketing line, nothing else. Which is why it's time to take a proper look again. What I find a bit puzzling about Kling is the way new models roll out without full feature support. It always feels like you're working with an outdated version unless you pick just the right function. Take this as an example. Kling 2.5 Turbo works with text to video, more on that later, and also supports image to video. But here's where it starts getting messy. Start and end frame only works with model 2.1. The elements feature falls back to Kling 1.6. Same goes for multi elements with add, swap, and delete options. It's strange and not really transparent. But first, a quick step back. Here's what this tutorial covers. What does the new Kling 2.5 Turbo video model bring to the table when it comes to image to video? Does it make sense to use the same model for text to video creation? A very brief look into the new Kling Lab. Is it only for pros? And finally, my verdict. All right, let's start with the first topic, image to video. But before diving into the results, a quick detour to the update page. Kling 2.5 Turbo makes some bold promises. The new model, according to Kling, offers much better prompt interpretation, can handle complex timing and stylization, and generates stable, realistic motion with consistent visual language, even in fast moving scenes. On top of that, the price per five second clip in 1080p has dropped to 25 credits, which is about 30% cheaper than version 2.1. Kling's own summary of the four highlights reads, max creativity with effects and transitions, dynamic scene with large range of motion, stylization with consistency, and coherence actions across multiple characters. So let's put that to the test today. Of course, a test without a comparison doesn't say much. That's why I created a base image in mid-journey for each example, always shown bottom left, and then used the exact same prompt to generate videos with three different Kling models. 2.5 Turbo, 25 credits top left, 2.1 Master, 100 credits top right and 2.1 regular, 35 credits bottom right. The prompts are based on Kling's own examples, refined with my master prompt structure for video AI platforms. You'll find all prompts in the pinned comment, since most are too long for on-screen captions. More inspiration is available on Kling's update page, link in the description. We begin with a closer look, and a small surprise, almost like pulling a rabbit out of a hat. This time it's a Mongolian warrior carrying a small kitten in a bowl. All three models follow the prompt reasonably well. But once again, the real test lies in pacing and nuance. The subtle rhythm of the sequence. The sly smile and the kitten slowly peeking out are simply more engaging in version 2.5 turbo. It also works nicely that the woman seems to hide behind the bowl. The only issue, in this version the bowl is held at the wrong angle it was supposed to tilt downward. The next example focuses on the feature dynamic scene with large range of motion in a deliberately complex environment. The viewer sees a loose sketch of a group of people dancing in sync. The visual style blends quick strokes with watercolor textures. Kling 2.5 Turbo handles this beautifully. It nails both the choreography and the stylization. Kling 2.1 tries but fails. The dance is there, but the drawing style gets distorted. Kling 2.1 Master costs 100 credits again, but the result still doesn't reach the level of 2.5 Turbo. Example 3. An army of folded paper figures. I used an SREF code from Midjourney to create the base image. The focus here is on the promise of stylization with consistency. In addition to animating the paper figures in a convincing way, I also emphasise depth of field in the prompt. Once again, 
Kling 2.5 Turbo goes all in and delivers strong prompt accuracy. The other two models, 2.1 and 2.1 Master, perform at a similar level. This example shows that even unusual mid-journey styles can be turned into animated motion. The next test is all about visual recognition. We're aboard the Queen Anne's Revenge, the flagship of Edward Blackbeard Teach. This grim character wants to show us the secrets of his treasure map, pointing out where the expedition is headed. Kling 2.5 Turbo handles the prompt with impressive precision. In version 2.1 though, he draws the line with all five fingers stretched out, which looks odd. 2.1 Master does a much better job and comes close to what 2.5 Turbo delivers. What I really like to cross all three, look closely at how the AI handles the parchment. It's surprisingly well done. Kling calls this one max creativity with effects and transitions. That's what the next example is built on. A druid raises his wand to summon a creature from swirling blue smoke. I also tested variations, a castle, a fortress gate, even a sports car. And I'll admit Kling squeezed a few extra credits out of me here because the results took several tries and still aren't quite where I'd like them to be. The differences between the three models are obvious and once again version 2.5 turbo pulls slightly ahead. The 2.1 version is way off the mark. Last one in this round, a scene that could be straight out of an adventure film. The boy on the left spots something and points at it. The girl with the red cap turns to look, and finally the boy in the middle throws his hands to his head in surprise. This was a deliberate test of the feature called Coherence Actions Across Multiple Characters. And to be honest, Kling 2.1 handles the sequence of actions better than 2.5 Turbo. As for 2.1 Master, it costs 100 credits, but the outcome is not only disappointing, it's hard to justify at all. Now, as promised, a look at the text to video feature. Until now, I've only used Kling for image to video. As someone who works visually, I always need a strong image as a starting point, something I fully believe in. I could never describe what I want in pure text. There's a reason people say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Working with text alone introduces too many variables I can't control. What does the style look like? What do the characters look like? What are they wearing? Where's the camera? How dynamic is the scene? To be honest, I'll probably continue using AI video tools. Kling, Seedance Pro, One 2.5, Midjourney Video, or whatever else, based on a start frame ideally paired with an end frame. But Kling's latest update promises four improvements, upgraded aesthetics and cinematic quality, better prompt adherence and control, more stability in dynamic scenes, and refined expressions for storytelling. For these tests, I use Kling's own example prompts as a guide, since I haven't defined a personal master prompt for text to video yet. All tests here were done using version 2.5, turbo only. The first example shows a mountain biker racing downhill through the mountains. The camera movement is fast and dynamic. It closely follows the rider as he moves. The way the environment is integrated, the visual effects and the prompt accuracy are all surprisingly strong. I have to admit, I didn't expect that. The only open question, how consistent can results like this stay across multiple scenes if everything is driven by text to video? alone. The second example also shows what's possible with text input only. A hockey player skates toward the opponent's goal with puck and stick in hand. In the prompt, I added the common phrase real-time speed that shows up frequently in Kling's templates. If you look closely, the AI struggles a bit to place the field correctly. There's a second goal visible on the right side, but overall it's a solid result. Example 3 takes us into a much more surreal setting. A blue and white duck flies through an obstacle course made of voxel-style trees and boulders. The pace is so fast and chaotic that you barely notice the many details. Catapults, rock-throwing orcs, fortress walls, flags. The reason for that speed burst is probably the prompt itself. The duck darts through the landscape. The final example really changes how I think about text to video. 
the prompt says something like, a sloth slowly climbs a tree, then looks at the camera and waves. The lighting, the fur, the motion, the birds in the background, and the direct interaction with the camera. I have to say it's hard to imagine a better result. And just to mention it, if you want to continue a scene generated with text to video, you could take the final frame and use it as a new starting point. That would essentially turn it from a text to video into an image to video workflow and give you some control over continuity and consistency. Now for a very brief look at the new Kling Lab, according to the update notes, it's now available to all users. But the first question is, what does all mean? I think many so-called regular AI users prefer the fast and simple route. Typing a bit of text, generating an image or a video, and that's it. So let's take a quick look at what the Kling Lab actually is. First, go to the main Kling homepage and click on Kling Lab in the left-hand menu. This opens a new tab in your browser. For orientation, in the top left, you'll see the main navigation. If you click on it, you get a drop-down with Home, Explore, and Assets, which takes you back to the main Kling interface. In the top right, you can see how many credits you still have. On the left, you can choose between personal projects and team projects. The lab itself is clearly focused on workflow building, tool switching, file management, and team collaboration. In the center, there's a large input field where you can enter an idea to start a new project. For testing, I just selected one of the suggested options. Clicking the plus icon lets you add footage, even multiple images. The clock icon gives you access to previous entries. Once you click the green feather icon, the project is created and opens with your initial input. Let's go back to the dashboard for a moment. If you've already created a project, hover your mouse over the tile and click the three dots in the top right corner. From there, you can open the project, duplicate it, rename it, or delete it entirely. To rename, just follow the next screen. Enter your new name, click confirm, and it's done. If you want to delete the project, also confirm on the next screen, and it disappears from your overview. Now for a very rough outline of what you can do here, a deep dive into this tool would need a separate tutorial. Click Create Now. You'll be presented with three options, image generation, video generation, or sound generation. What you choose here doesn't really matter because you can mix and match any element later within the board. This is more about basic orientation, especially if you already know what you're aiming to create. I'll show you a few fully built examples later. For now, let's keep it simple and go with image generation. Kling will then generate a default setup. For image generation, you'll see the prompt field on the left and on the right, the linked settings panel, including model selection, parameters like aspect ratio, output type, and image quality. Depending on your choices, the credit cost will vary. Once you're happy with the settings, click Generate. You can rearrange any of the fields freely across the board. The images are then created using Kling's image model colors. Let's take a closer look at the output. There's an Add to Chat option, which sends the result into the prompt bar below for further use. You can zoom in to check all the details, you can duplicate the image or download it. Any of these blocks can also be selected and deleted using the delete key. But don't worry, just like in other graphics tools, you can undo actions with Control Z. For a list of shortcuts, click the block icon in the top right corner. A drop down will show you how everything works. If you hold down the space bar and left click, you can move the board around. If you hold Control, and use the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. The Enter Idea field lets you add new topics at any time. If something doesn't fit, just select it with the mouse and hit Delete. In the bottom right, there's a kind of map that lets you navigate the entire whiteboard, including zoom. The light green areas show the active sequences. So if you move the viewport somewhere random, your view might go completely blank. In the top right corner, there's the Generation Results icon. Click on any of the listed elements and you'll jump directly to that part of the board. No need to search manually. This panel can also be opened and closed whenever needed. 
Along the top row, you'll also find a link to the Kling user guide, which includes some useful tips. There are a few additional tools here to help organize the board. Clicking Hide Connections removes the lines between elements. Auto layout is helpful if your board gets cluttered and it becomes hard to see which blocks connect to which outputs. Kling will automatically rearrange them for better clarity. If you want to edit a prompt, just double click the corresponding field. The structure icon right next to it lets you manually add nodes for text, images, or video. More importantly though, are the three grouped modules that let you define full workflows. For sound, you have text to audio and video to audio. For video, there's text to video, frames, which is basically image to video, and elements, where you can combine up to four images. And for image generation, you'll find text to image, image to image, images to image, and restyle. All of these options come with pre-built templates. You just fill them with your own data, adjust the settings, and run the generation. On the left, there's also the My Assets tab. Click it to view your recent outputs. If you want to use one of those files, just drag and drop it onto the board. In the top left, you'll also see the project name, which you can rename right there if needed. Let me demonstrate the workflow using one of Kling's own examples, since the interface can be a bit overwhelming at first. We'll open the example called One Shot. Here's what the user has done. In the first four rows, you see the prompt on the left, the corresponding settings in the middle, and the generated images on the right. Four images per prompt. Out of those 16 images, four were selected to create video clips using start and end frames. That means start frame video one, end frame video one, start frame video two, end frame video two, and so on. On the left is always the prompt, in the center the video generation settings, and on the far right the three final clips. This gives you a clear view of the entire workflow and lets you fine tune it later if needed. But again, this isn't a deep dive. Just a quick surface level look at what Kling Lab can do. Enough with the overload. If you're curious, give it a try. My verdict, Kling 2.5 Turbo definitely makes a statement. The videos it creates are generally high quality, but still this fragmented rollout across multiple models raises questions. Why not unify all functions under the newest version, even with a pro and light split, if that's really necessary? Sure, it probably has to do with training data, but from a user's point of view, it feels inconsistent. Prompt accuracy in Kling 2.5 Turbo is quite good, and the lower credit cost genuinely encourages experimentation. At the moment, though, there's no way to define negative prompts. One thing that really surprised me when you tell it to move the object a few centimetres, Kling 2.5 Turbo actually does exactly that, with noticeable precision. And yes, I tested different prompt lengths using the same master structure. If you want a very specific motion sequence with real depth, you should describe it in detail. If you don't, the AI will fill in the gaps with its own interpretation, and you might get something you never asked for. Finally, Kling Lab a fascinating solution that lets you build entire workflows visually. It reminds me a bit of Miro or other so-called infinite whiteboards. You can define scenes, set anchor points and links, adjust presets and structure whole storylines. Will the average user, someone just creating a quick video for TikTok or Instagram, really use this? I doubt it. It's more for professional users, studios or agencies. That's where I see myself. Though, of course, I could be completely wrong. By the way, Midjourney introduced something called Patchwork as well. Link in the description. Does anyone actually use this tool to build stories? That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.